Hey everyone, this is Wade from fishfindermounts.com. We've got a fabulous solution for uh, inflatable boats, especially boats, boats where they don't have a hard transom. Um, you're going to need to do something actually a little bit more radical than our typical solutions. Our typical solutions are um, usually our magnetic transducer mount series and we have a strap-on series and stuff like that. And if you don't have the capability to screw onto your boat or you don't want to screw onto the boat, it's another issue. Uh, or you want to, uh, you don't have the ability like you see here in this style of boat where the strap can go around. You see, you can put a strap around here and I can show that to you in another video later here. So definitely subscribe to our channel and check, check those different videos out because we'll have a video here today we're going to shoot where it shows the strap around. Um, you get the idea of a strap here. Uh, this is a glue-on system, very, very good solution, but it does take more work to put it on, and we're going to show you how to do it today. Uh, essentially, what you want to do is you want to select the spot on your boat. Now, what we recommend is we recommend that you would get your boat ideally on the water first and then mark the water line for the boat. Um, you can get the different extension arms for the transducer mount. There's these different links here. Each one of them gives you two and a half inches of length. So you can see there's three um, wing nuts here. They're all stainless, of course. And that's giving you three links from the root arm. So there's one, two, three, four. Four 2.5 inch lengths here all together. That means we've got 10 inches of reach right here. Because we're going to mount, we've decided to mount here on this side of the actual um, the, uh, seam bumper here around the hydroforce boat here. So we've decided that's what we want to do for purpose of this video. We don't have the luxury of being in the water here today. So, you know, that, like I say, th this step number one is to, if you can, go to the water and find the water line. You might prefer, if you don't have a seam here, you might prefer to put it right in the middle. But because we have a seam, we're going to either be on either side. So I've decided, okay, I, I could put it here and you might do that. But for the purpose of this video, it's hard to shoot it that way. We're going to put it up here and we're going to use extra extensions. And you can buy these extensions on our website, the um, transducer mounts page store of our website. And uh, so we're going to just get started. The first thing you should do, there's a couple of things you could do. Either you could trace this uh, or you could sand it first. It doesn't really matter which step you do. I'm going to, I'm going to trace it first. And you're like, why are you going to do that, Wade? Well, you're going to want to, to do the nicest job. You don't have to do this. You could be really sloppy Joe if you want, but I like to do things nicely. I'm going to put the tape around here so that we, when we glue it, we don't, if we have any over splash or over painting of it, it gets onto the tape. So when I rip the tape off, there's no extra glue everywhere else. It's like you're painting your house, your window frames or what have you. Um, so we're going to trace around this. I got a pencil here. You could use any kind of thing. I guess, you know, the pencil, you know, you could erase it. Um, so we're just going to take this pencil um, and we'll check to see if the pencil, in the instructions it says pencil, but, oh yeah, indeed, the pencil on the blue, I'm not sure, yeah, I guess the pencil would work good on the white, so there you go, it's got a, a decent um, <clears throat> low show, you know, it's not, it's not a thick line, so it's not going to make your boat look as ugly as if you had a pen or, or a felt pen. If you have poor eyesight, you might use a different marker, but I'm going to do this again just quickly. One more time, just trace around it. We know that the seam here is also the other bottom part of the, the pencil. So here we have it. Now, the reason why I decided to trace this first is because I'm going to sand not just this, that being the Scotty glue-on pad that we incorporated into the product, but uh, I'm, we're also having, we have to actually uh, sand the boat itself in that spot. So that's what we're going to do. We take, uh, in the assembly instructions, we have uh, 180, degree, uh, 180 grit sandpaper, which we have here right now. And then we just go ahead and we start to sand the part and we would sand the boat. So uh, for purpose of this video, I'm just going to show you the idea. This creates a surface, a better surface uh, for the glue to bond to. So. I'm a little bit disjointed here because I should be taping it first, so that's what I'm going to do. So here we have our tape, and uh, I've started to scuff this up. I'll do it a little bit more, but I'm going to tape around it first, so that even when I'm I'm sanding, I'm not damaging uh, around further off the boat. So we'll just take the tape and line it up nicely here. 
Um, it's got round corners, the Scotty glue-on pad. And by the way, you can get this glue-on pad in black or white from us. Um, so you can actually make the selection when you're buying it on our web store. It's a little confusing too. There's a drop-down box <clears throat> when you're buying the transducer mount and actual the full kit where we have the glue-on uh, control head part of it. We'll show you that in a little bit and the actual transducer glue-on part. You can, there's a little drop-down box. You choose your color. Make sure you do that. Otherwise, you can't complete the uh, add to cart function um, and purchase the product. So we'll just keep taping here. And masking tape is easy to work with as any of you that have done any paint work before on your home. It's somewhat not tacky, so it's easy and it's easy to rip. So the glue that we'll be using today while I'm doing this is the Stay Bond UA Stay Bond. UK 148 and this is a good glue for doing um, Hyperlon uh, material to a PVC material. It's, it's the best glue. It's a professional grade glue. It's not just any kind of hokey glue. It's, it's the right thing to choose for this job. Um, if you have PVC to PVC or you know Hyperlon to Hyperlon or something like that, you might choose a different glue. But this is a good glue for doing different materials as such this is a PVC a flexible PVC to a hyperlon fabric um, so in this case this is the glue kind of glue or this is the glue model or type that you want to be selecting so we've got this almost done here do down below here I'm not sure if I really need to do this but I'm going to just to be safe There you have it. So we've got that nicely quarantined off. We will go ahead and finish our sanding of it. Let's fold this up a little bit more so it's controllable, more controllable. Yeah, you can sand right on top of the tape, so that's perfect. You probably want to do a good job of this because this is creating the, the opportunity for the glue to bond as, as well as possible to the boat. Just do a general now that I've got kind of all the fine points done. And I wouldn't be shy of using the sandpaper, all the good parts of it, so you get a really good sand. And I'm picky about how I do my stuff, so I know that I don't have to redo it in the future. I want to do it one time only. So there we go. Now we take the, uh, this is the white one. We've chosen the white one because we feel like it'll go with the boat the nicest, look the nicest. So we'll take this guy, sand this guy up good. You can't really see that well when you scuff it up. I'll do a black I'll do the black one here. You can see the stuff flying off of it actually. <laughs> right there. So it's 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 having a good effect. So if you did the black one, the black one will show up a lot better. We'll just do a quick scuff of it so you can see what it would look like on the black. So you can see it actually scars it up pretty good. And actually, if you can compare the surfaces, it is quite textured now with even a little bit of sanding. So maybe I'm going overboard even. It's pretty good how easy it is to, how easy it is to, um, provide a texture to it with sanding so that's nice so again that's 180 grit sandpaper we've got everything prepared now for the actual installation of 
our glue-on transducer mount. Um, and then we're going to do the same thing for the control head. So the next stage of this video, I'm going to show you how to actually glue it on. All right, well now what we have here, folks, is we have the, uh, the, the surfaces have been prepared. They've been sanded with our 180 grit sandpaper that I showed you earlier in this video. And uh, you sand the, bo the, the boat itself, and you sand the actual um, the Scotty glue-on plate. Um, we're going to use the Stay Bond UK 148 Component 1 glue. You can get this from NRS. Um, that's where we know you can get it. You can get it from other places, I think, too. But NRS is very, very uh, marketed it quite well. Like, if you look this up, NRS will be the site that comes up for this actual glue right away. The other thing I should mention too is we do have included with um, all of this is a good um, instruction sheet. It gives you point for point instructions as to what you know materials you need. They don't have in there gloves. Uh, I've included gloves. They do mention it in the course of what they're talking about here. Uh, I've decided to put some gloves on for doing the gluing part of it so I don't get my hands all gunky. So you might want to get some kind of... Uh, whatever these gloves are, some kind of rubber gloves for automotive work. So that is the instructions that will be included, but this video will be the ultimate instructional actually. So uh, we're going to take the glue here and uh, you know you might want to have at hand too a little screwdriver or something. We got this uh, all-in-one tool that we're using but some kind of a can opener or something like that would work good. Paint can opener. You just take this, open it up and one of the things that you'll notice as well with this glue is you have two parts. You have the main base of the glue and then you have an actual hardener. This says right here um, 12 parts glue or 12 parts of this hardener and <clears throat> 100 parts of this. So it's really a splash to the actual main body of the glue and it's quite stinky. So definitely be doing this outside if you can. Try not to do it in your garage unless you have some really good ventilation or what have you in there. So we're going to take this, I got the spoon here, we'll use it to mix it as well and we'll just put that in here um, and we got our little brush as well so we're ready for that. I, I don't think we'll need that much glue. I'll do a couple of doses of it in here and I just use like a, a this is an applesauce or you could get yogurt or whatever kind of container so you just throw it out after you've done the job and we'll just take uh, maybe we'll take this guy out. We, we want to be careful. This is just going to pour out. Actually, you know what, guys? What we'll do, remember it's 12 parts. We'll just pour it into here. Um, that's probably too much. Yeah, probably something like that is about right. Let's put that back together here. We're going to need it for our install of the control head solution we have as well. <clears throat> so I just got a little plastic spoon I typically put in my kids' lunches if they have something that needs. So we're going to take this guy, mix her up good. So we've got this now prepared. There should be enough to spread. <clears throat> put the spoon back in here. We're going to take our glue on, Scotty glue on plate here. We're going to take the brush. And it's a thin coat, is what the instructions say. So you just want a thin coat of this on here. And you do this three times. So you spread the coat, it's coating, thin coating. You let it dry for 10 to 30 minutes. It says, depending on conditions, i.e. if it's hot outside, I would say, and, you know, what's the wind movement like. So you want to get it everywhere. So, you know, you're dedicating, like we're doing a video, so it's, there's more time we're putting into this, but, you know, if you're just doing this without having to do what we do, i.e. videos and all of that to show you fine folk out there, our good customers and friends, how to do this. You could probably do it within, eh, you know, 45 minutes to an hour is what I would estimate. So I've sanded this as well. It's all scuffed up. And I'm going to take this guy 
to do my brushes on here nicely actually on this part. Remember it's a thin coat. It's not super warm today. I'd say it's like, you know, right now it's about 17 degrees outside. It's overcast. Um, and uh, there's no sun shining on us at this point. So, you know, it says 10 to 30 minutes. So we'll just, they say what they do, they say to do is they do a knuckle test, meaning you take the back of your knuckle and kind of see how tacky it is at that point. Is it dry or not? Is what they say to do in the instructions so you guys know. So that's what we'll do in the next part of this video. Just want to make sure my coverage is perfect. Okay. So that's the first coat. So we're going to do a few coats of this. There's three coats. I don't think we need to film all the coats, but we'll do the first coat, you wait for it to dry between 10 and 30 minutes, depending on the conditions. Check with the back of your knuckle. Is it dry? It looks like it's drying very quickly, actually. I might have more parts of that stuff than I need. I'm going to have to do it again because i got to put more glue in here for the other applications. So you might have to do the same. So, you know, I didn't put that much in here. You might want to fill it up and do it all in one fell swoop so you can kind of get a sense of how much is in here. So we wait and... Uh, and then we come back at it, do another one, and uh, actually I think NRS says to do two. I think we put in there three, so you know, two or three coats, really thin coats. And the final one, you wait that 30 minutes, and then you put these surfaces together, this onto that at that point. You do not do it before then if you want to do it right and do it well. All right, we're ready to put our second coat on. I'm just doing this, and it's not actually sticking to my glove. Just double check this. Same thing here. So it's actually drying very quickly, actually, within about 10 minutes. So that's about 17 degrees outside, no sun. Second coat. Sun's out actually, and it's, it's drying very quickly the way that we've mixed it. So it says two parts for NRS. We've said three as well, so it's a bit conflicting. You'll have to use your own discretion and judgment, but we're going to go with two, two parts here. We're going to stick it on. It says to actually stick it on when you feel there's some tackiness. It's not completely dry. On either side. I'm going to use the bottom here as my rule and you want to get everything pressed down really nicely everywhere so you can see that I've inflated the boat there's there I've had questions where people will ask you know should I have the boat inflated or, infl or uh, not inflated I would say have it inflated for sure that's what you want Hey everyone, this is Wade from fishfindermounts.com and uh, we've done our install on our um, Blue-On transducer mount on our Zodiac style of boat. This is a Hydro Force. It's about a 10, 10 foot boat here. So uh, I've, I've thought about this here and this is what you're going to do too. Like, and Before you install it, I would really highly recommend that you think about it. Um, where do you want to put it on your boat and for what reasons? So this one here, this is, I'm going to glue this control head on as well. Uh, you can see it has the Scotty's glue on plate here also. So, you know, I've thought about it, we've, you know, and we've got our transducer on that side because I'm going to be controlling the motor like this. So I want my fish finder, like if it's back here, you could do that too, but you'd be like kind of looking back. Uh, maybe when you're, you're, you're just jigging or whatever for bass or you're still, then that might be okay. But I think when you're riding along, you want to have it so that you could situate the screen like so. And so, you know, I've thought about it and thought that that would be the best place to situate the fish finder for the glue on setup here. So we're going to go ahead and do that. There you go. Three, two, one. So I have our um, control head mount, glue on mount portion of this install here on the top or apex of the actual bladder of the hydrofoil zodiac style of boat and uh, we're going to trace this out so I'm going to just line that up here 
So here what you're seeing is actually uh, the bottom part of our glue-on box and you can actually take the battery out of the glue-on box, or the, not the glue-on box, but our battery box and we've got different pre-drilled our pre divots if you want, chamfered divots that with a quarter inch drill you can punch these through and mount this, you know, take the screws and put it on our gunnel clamp. Uh, in this case it's on the glue on so you can take these out and uh, move them around and you know and, and if you bought one of these we wouldn't drill these out at all for you. We would actually, um, as you can see here, it's a quick, quick connect I have another video, we have a few, a couple of videos of this and it just nicely pops in like that so you can actually easily just take it on and off. Um, so we'll just take that off so you get the idea there's quite a few different variations that you could look at doing and a lot of it's around convenience, what's convenient for you the customer or the user of the product and what you prefer. So we're going to take this guy here and I'll ask the cameraman if it's straightened up or if it's, if it's in the right position here as I'm looking at it. Does yeah. that look good? Yeah. Good. Now we're going to take this pencil and we're going to again create a perimeter outline around the actual glue on pad. And it actually shows up pretty well. You can see it there now. So we'll take that, put it there. And then the next thing what I'll do is I'll actually get some tape and I'll put a perimeter just like you see on this one around it. Okay, here we go. We're going to tape it again. So I'm showing this more than once just so that people get a really good clear idea exactly how to do this. So we just take our mask and tape and we edge it along the pencil outline here. similar to the concept of when you're painting your windows in your house, I like to say. So that you don't get over splash of the medium you're using. In this case we're using glue as our medium, of course. I'm going to do the corners here. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to scuff this, meaning we're going to sandpaper it so that it creates a more bondable area. It gives it a better, much better adhesion. It's really a necessary step. So do not avoid doing any of these steps we're showing you here in this video. Do them all. So when you get the product from us, everyone, um, it's going to have a Scotty glue on pad. Usually what we do is we install it. It may change in the future. That's why I'm going through this. We install it um, onto the product and send it to you, but it may not be. If it isn't installed as such, there will be some square screws that you implant in the bottom here. And you can see them there and there and there and there. And we've got the right length of screws as well with it that you see here so that you can, um, you'll, push those in and then of course whatever you screw to it will catch that, that, that nut. And so I just wanted to show you what that looks like. It's flexible PVC and it's very flexible actually. I noticed that we've had it out in the sun. It's extraordinarily flexible now. Very, very malleable. So you're not going to worry about when you actually, um, you know, you collapse your boat or what have you. Is it going to form okay? Yeah, it will. It's, it's going to be quite fine. So we're going to take this guy now and scuff it up quickly. Last time I was on the side, so this should be a little easier for us to do. I can get some good pressure pushing down on it. So that's another thing when you're installing. You might think about, you know, like the pressure aspect, the physics aspect of how you do all of this to make it easier on you. I think you could do this all within an hour or, or between a half an hour and an hour. So it's not too bad. And there's actually a lot of the granular uh, rubber that's come off this time because I've been able to get a good, good uh, pressure on it. I'm just going to do it one more time because I'm always concerned that I do a really good job right around the perimeter and then just quickly in the middle here for you guys to see. 180 grit sandpaper again guys, that's what I'm using here.
And actually, it's nice that I have come to think of it this bolted on there, and I'm holding it because it gives a real firm surface to sort of hold on to and get this job done with. The size might be the most crucial. I just want to make sure that's. So you can't really see it on here, but like the black one, you can see it takes it off actually quite easily. It scuffs quite quite well. I want to get the debris off here so it's nice and pre prepped. Okay, and now we are ready to do the glue on operation. All right, we're going to go ahead and do the gluing operation here, everyone. So we've got. The glue is UK148 component from Stabon. It's got a hardener with it as well. And again, just so you know, in case I chop this video up too and I'm putting it on our website and our YouTube channel, it's 100 parts to 12 parts. Okay, and you can buy this stuff that we've seen on the web. You can buy it anywhere you want. You can find it, but we know it's available at NRS on the website and we're using their videos. So it's kind of nice to promote them a little bit because they've provided these good videos in advance of us doing our own and they were quite informative so there's a lot of good actual information on their website on the NRS website and I think if you call those people there at our NRS they would probably be very helpful too if you really wanted further information about this product um, so it's a thin coat they say a very thin coat to do this one stuck on there really nicely, so we're we're happy with that. And it's actually a good spot where we put it because it stays, keeps it out of the water, less less stuff hitting it or whatever. So actually, the sun's peaked out here, even though it's a little cloudy today, and um, it's drying very quickly. Okay, so there's our first coat there, and we'll do our next coat here onto this component. We're going to have to do another coat, so I'll mix some more glue. Yeah, it's not super viscous now at this point. It's already kind of dried to some extent. It's pretty crazy how fast this stuff sets. It's probably, you know, you, you don't need much hardener, that's for sure. So we've got these two components now ready. Um, for the first, the first coat's been applied. We're going to do another coat here, and then we're going to stick the two together. So we'll do that next. Okay, so we're going to do the mixing of the glue again. So you guys are very, very clear on how that all works. So we're going to just pour some of this stuff in there. Probably don't need that much anymore because I'll just take this glue, the hardener. Actually, it's 100 parts to 12 parts of this. Um, I think I'll put some more glue in there just to make sure that the, the mixture is not overly hardened. We're going to do another coat here, but first before we do that, we're going to do our knuckle test. Yeah, there is no, there's no adhesion at all. We're going to do this one quicker this time so we can make sure this, this is a little bit better. Again, a thin coat, not a thick coat. I think as long as you just try to keep it thin and not goopy, you'll be fine. Okay, so I think that's done. Now we're going to wait about a minute or two here. Again, it's the knuckle test as I've shown you many times now. You press down on it with a knuckle, and if it tacks, you, they say in this one you want it to be tacky. Yeah, it's almost pretty much there already. It's crazy. No glue's coming off, so we'll go ahead and make the bond, I think. Yep, we're going to go ahead and make this bond, everyone. So yeah, it says 10 minutes, but I don't think... Put the pin to the inside. We need any... Um, we don't need to wait. So in this case, I want to use 
the edge of the tape. I kind of got a little sloppy on this one, unfortunately, a little bit. So there's some glue over, overage. So, um, you might not want to have this. <laughs> you might not want to have this actually on there. It's nice to have it on there when you're painting all the glue together. But if you want to press down on this side, it's almost impossible with it on there. So again, I've had the boat inflated to do this, um, and you can see I saw it showed in this video that it's quite malleable, these glue-on pads. I'm going to put this back on because I want the weight. I don't think you necessarily need it, but I think it's not a bad idea either. So we'll take this guy. You can see how easy it is then to put it on and off of here. And we're going to take the Garmin product here, the Garmin Striker 5, very cool fish finder. And we are going to let's take these off, the transducer and the power cable for now. And we're going to lock this guy in there. So you can see there's notches here. This one here is to the outer notch. It's the 5 amp hour battery box here can see it's going to notch in with this structure here of the battery box so we're going to do that and then over here is your indexing latch we use it as sort of a lock and then it's on there really nice I don't want to pull on it too hard because we just glued it so now this is creating a constant pressure on the actual joint here so that you know as it dries it's, it's probably already dried pretty much I know it over over days further it's, it sets um, even more so it's going to be a good bond and uh, we can actually take this guy because I'm sure you guys are interested in this as well we can take this guy we take the power so this is the power it's actually flat on the Garmin Striker 5 and all the Garmin products they do it this way their press fits like hummingbird so you just take this plug we have the, the plug coming out of the battery box so the camera can come around here and have a look at it it's coming out it's it's like a strain relief too. You can't actually take it, yank it out. It's 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 pressed in there good. And you just take the end of the cable, and then this power cable that you can see it's been crimped here. It comes with these crimps on it, and you crimp it to the power cable. You just need you just need the red and the black. We've left the fuse on. Garmin does that. Some of the other manufacturers they say you need a fuse and they don't even include it. It's what they're saying. What, the truth is you don't really need a fuse, but it's. A little bit, it's a bit more safe, you know, obviously when the battery's in this box, how's it going to short? It's not, so, you know, there's really no way to short it once it's in our battery box. So we, we say, you know, it's optional, but the manufacturer's saying, well, if anything ever was to happen and you don't have that on, you're, you're out of luck, your warranty's void. So you'll have to make the decision of what your risk level, preferable risk level is. So we just take this guy, we plug it in here, just as you see there. And for the demonstration of the video, I'll just take it, you can see it can swivel you know like even right to here if you want oh, it's already powered up so it automatically turned on here we really want to go to the sonar let's get out of here let's let's select the sonar here we'll, we'll select this one and there you can see it it's split screen this is your gps this is your traditional sonar and this is your down scan imaging your down view is as dv stands for as garmin calls it so there you have it. There's the uh, Garmin Striker 5 DV on our 5 amp hour glue on kit. This is the entire kit in one. You know, you've got your fish finder here and you've got your transducer mount here, and the transducer mount will, you know, obviously link up to the fish finder itself. And um, Again, you know, the decision-making process about how you install all this on there, you may, that's one thing that you want to do, the planning side of it, you want to do that first, you know, like where is this going to be when I'm on the boat? So we take the fish finder, we're blasting along, we've got our motor here, the fish finder's there in front of me. Once, you know, you, you've sort of like slowed down and you start to fish and stuff like that, I think there's even less issues there um, around being able to see your finder. You can tilt it up, maybe you're casting. You know, you tilt it up to yourself and 
what have you, you know, I'm a fly fisherman, so I cast like this. <laughs> so this is Wade from FishFighterMounts.com, Flow Tube Fanatics, and you see our incredible uh, glue-on mounting system for those of you that want to use this method to install. We're going to show you in some other videos here next um, some other methods that we do have, but where you do not have a hard transom like you see here, um, you really no other option than to use the glue-on system where you have sort of one of the all-round uh, Zodiac inflatable boats, you know, it's, it's, it's one kind of almost oval donut, the hard floor, no transom, you know, maybe it's one of those clamp-on or sort of like throw it over the side type of transoms. In that case, this is the system you really need. The uh, Sea Eagle F285 or the 285 FPS, I believe it is, um, that is a, a classic example of where you would need to use this system on those boats. So again, this is Wade from FishFinderMouse.com. Call us at 1-855-784-3474 toll free. That's 1-855-784-3474 toll free to get your amazing fish finder mounting solution. We are making all fish finders portable. Thanks for watching everyone.